Howdy y'all, thank you for joining us today for this unboxing of Marvel Champions the Card Game, the Hero Pack of War Machine. As you can see here, this little pack has a 60 card Hero Pack, it has a complete pre-built War Machine deck, as you can see here. It's going to have 31 new cards that can be used to customize your current decks. And then it's also going to include the Nemesis set which is the explosive living laser. So let's check this out. There is a seal here that I've already pre-cut. So it'll let you know if the, your package may already be tampered with. If not, then all you have to do is, if I can figure out how to get this open, is when you look, you should open it up. You should have a pack of cards that should be sealed. And then underneath this flap here, you're going to have basically a little instruction booklet slash poster. So we'll take a look at that. Usually the poster is whatever you saw on the cover. Just giving you that art. And then normally we get the pack. Any, cha any rules changes for it here or anything that needs to let you know. And then here we get what the deck is built and we see the one of the four aspects that it could be built in and we see that it is leadership which was not what i guessed at all i was assuming justice or really a vi or aggression did not think about leadership but i'm cool with that leadership's one of my favorites to play and then we have the credits here let's see what's inside of it i am happy with leadership it is one of the aspects i play a lot of my main deck right now is Ant-Man, which is a leadership deck. So, And of course, when we get done with this unboxing, I will do a playthrough of War Machine versus the starter deck of Rhino, which is the starter villain in um, the core box. All right, so let's take a look at War Machine here. As we can see here, he's got a one thwart, a two attack, and a two defense. And he's got locked and loaded, with, loaded. And what he has is a response active ability. So I like responsibilities. So let's see what's up. It says, after you change to this form, place five ammo counters on War Machine. Which is giving me a hint of sounding something like um, Groot to a degree. Let's check out James Rhodes here. Recovery of three. Action. Choose a War Machine card in your discard pile and shuffle it into your deck. All right. So let you do a little bit of healing, basically, and getting your... I mean, those 15 cards that come with your main deck seem to be some of the best cards. So let you shuffle those back in. We have a forced response. After you change this form, discard each ammo counter from your identity. I was thinking aggression. I was just thinking about all these weapons he'd be using. He has a hand size of six, hit points 10, so kind of typical. And right off the bat, so these first 15 cards are going to be the 15 cards that come inside the deck that you have to play with when you're when you're building. And we get what I expected, an Iron Man, Iron Man as an ally card. And as we can see here, three for three hit points, two thwart, two attack. And when he enters play, search your deck and discard pile for a tech upgrade and add it to your hand. All right. Then we get mun Munitions Bunker. It's his Alter Ego card, basically. Exhaust Munitions Bunker. Place two ammo counters here. Exhaust Ammunitions Bunker or Munitions Bunker and move each ammo counter here to War Machines. So basically, if you need to switch back over to Alter Ego form, let you put some of them on here to hold till you need them. So I'm guessing he, and I guess I can already probably see it here. I'm assuming he's going to have cards that are going to be using those ammunition things, uh, counters. And the more ammunition counters you have, and it didn't have a limit on there. So I'm assuming the more ammunition counters you have, the more you're going to do, I'm guessing, damage-wise. Kind of like the uses, the uses or the uh, energy counters. But War Machine gains the aerial trait. And then as a hero response, after you change the hero form, exhaust upgraded chases and give War Machine a tough status card. Gauntlet gun, exhaust gauntlet gun, 
Generate a wild resource for War Machine event and place one ammo counter on War Machine. And he's got two of those. Missile launcher, exhaust missile launcher, and remove one ammo counter from War Machine, deal two damage to an enemy. This attack gains ranged. I was also kind of thinking, yeah, maybe something like Rocket Raccoon to a degree. That's the reason I brought up the uses and the energy counters. Uh, hero action, attack, exhaust shoulder cannon, deal one damage to an enemy. You may remove one ammo counter from War Machine to ready the shoulder cannon. So basically you can just unload with the shoulder cannon. Seems interesting. Repulsor beam, hero action, remove one ammo counter from War Machine, deal four damage to an enemy. Seems pretty good. You can get two of those. Targeted strike, hero action thwart, remove one ammo counter from War Machine, remove three threat from a scheme. Two of those. Scorched Earth. Remove three ammo counters from War Machine. Deal three damage to each enemy in play. There you go. Just take out minions and everything. Two of those. Full Auto. Remove four ammo counters from War Machine and choose an enemy. Deal eight damage to that enemy. That attack gains overkill. Full Auto. Two of those. All right. So those are the 15 cards that you have to play with no matter what with war machine and then next we're going to see his leadership deck and usually right off the bat whatever aspect it is we always see a new ally that is new to the game and i'll try to recognize if these are new cards or if they're old ones we recognize and right off the bat here yes we see a new card here we have black panther he is four cost for four hit points two thwart two attack but he does have two consequence stars on each of those it says you may play the event attached to black panther as if it were in your hand as a response after black panther enters play choose a leadership blue event in your discard pile and attach it to him face down so basically lets you reuse a event a leadership event so like some of those do some pretty cool stuff with uh, especially with the leadership deck so that's basically what he's letting you combo. I just don't know if I like the two consequence stars. I don't know how I feel about that. We have another ally here. So we got Captain Marvel, a new card. Five for four, two thwart, three attack. Only one consequence star on the thwart, two on the attack. As a response, after Captain Marvel enters play, discard the top four cards of your deck. If you discard a printed I believe it's a reflex resource deal three damage to an enemy if you discard more than one printed resource also stun that enemy okay all right so this is an old one i i think i had it in my deck i think i just took it out for not because it was any was bad or anything just the save on space and i wanted to add in captain america into my ant-man but this is an old one for Three hit points. After Falcon enters play, look at the top three cards of the encounter deck for each treachery looked at it this way. Remove one threat from a scheme. Goliath is another old repeat or extra. Four for four. I think he is still in one of my decks that I built. I just don't remember which one. But yep, he gets plus four attack until the end of phase. At the end of the phase, discard Goliath. So really good for that last final attack before he goes out. We have command team here, or command team. Two for support, it gets three uses. You exhaust command team and remove a command counter from it to ready an ally. Actually, that could be kind of useful. And you get three of them. Pretty sure that's a new one. Sneak attack for one as an action, choose an ally in your hand that shares a trait with your identity. Put that ally into play. If that ally is still in play at the end of the phase, discard it. So, I mean, it's a cheap way to jump an ally out there and let them just do some stuff. Especially some of those allies that do something when they come out. So, pretty sure this is a new one. I might put like one or two in my deck and try it out. Save the day, and I'm sure you recognize that scene. So, one, an event. Hero action, discard an ally you control, remove threat from a scheme equal to that ally's printed cost. 
This can be very useful if you have an ally that costs a lot, like Captain America or Beta Ray Bill. And you're going to attack with them anyways, or you just attacked with them and they, they're down to their last hit point, you can go ahead and use them to remove a ton of scheme from one of the, uh, or a ton of threat, I mean, from one of the schemes. So I think this is a pretty much a new one. I don't remember that one. Go down swinging. Zero, discard an ally you control. Deal damage to an enemy equal to that ally's printed cost. Same thing I just said about save the day. Of course, this is a zero cost, so I actually think I like this one a lot, like I said, because I do play with several high cost allies. So, man, I'm even thinking, well, of course, then it gets rid of that block they could do. But if it's that last final one, just to take out a uh, villain. And that is new, too. Just like I said, they're both new. Make the call. This is not new. I have seen this one before. Uh, pay the pretty cost of an ally in any player's discard pile. Put that ally into play under your control. Good way to get some other things and I, I kind of figured we start seeing more of these like the early days of this game we would see the resources for each aspect where it just counted as two when used against that resource and then as soon as I saw the one show up in nebula and then we saw it in the Titan shadow box all four of them I expected we're gonna start seeing these show up more so you can get more of them even though it is max one per deck but this is kind of cool. Mockingbird. I always call this the generic character. It's, it, I mean, saying that, I'm not saying it's bad. I actually have played with this. I think it is in some of my decks too. It's just, I call it the generic. It's three for three hit points, one and thwart, one attack. And then just saying that they have some ability. Hers is stunning. I mean, that's awesome. Like pay three, bring her in, stun your villain to where they're not going to get to attack. And then you're going to get to do some stuff with her. Seems pretty good. Quinn Carrier. Play with it in my deck. It is an old card. Two against the world. New team up card for Iron Man and War Machine. Three costs to bring out. Search your deck for a tech upgrade and put it into play. Shuffle your deck. Ready Iron Man and War Machine. Then we see the basic energy strength genius. And then that is your deck. So if you are new to the game, you would just have to buy this as long as someone else has a core set and you're good to go. This is what you would shuffle up and play with. This would be your character that is out and your deck's good to go. You could play with this. Of course, buying other cards would let you, or other sets and other uh, expansions would let you modify or change the aspect, but you don't need to. And we're going to see how it goes up against Rhino. Now the next cards, everybody has an obligation. They get shuffled into the villain deck and it, it's one of those cards that just, if it comes up, they're gonna have to deal with that obligation. And his is equipment malfunction here. So this would be shuffled in. So this is another card you have to have, but you don't, have, you don't play with it in your deck. It goes into the villain deck. Hence, they got a different colored back. And then the next five cards will be his arch nemesis, which will be living laser, which will come out with shadows of the past. I don't think I've seen anything else yet that brings it out that I've ran into yet, but shadows of the past is usually the way it comes out and it'll bring out his living laser. It'll go off to the side, but then if you hit it, living laser would come out along with his side scheme here, deadly light show. And then you would shuffle the next three cards into his deck, which would be Laser Strike, or into the Villain deck, Laser Strike and Laser Strike. So those would shuffle into the Villain deck whenever that card comes out. And then that lets you know that's everything you need in order to play. You can put the rest of this to the side. The rest of these cards after this are going to be just usually all new cards. I've only seen a couple times that it hasn't been a new card, but they're usually new cards that usually are good for building into the other aspects with War Machine, which we saw leadership here, and we got the other aspects, which are justice, protection, and aggression. Or if you look at it as if you buy all these, these are just more cards for you to be able to build your character, uh, to put into your character's decks. 
On the back of this card is also usually the War Machine deck, which will let you know everything that's in here so that if you played this and you wanted to rebuild it, you can do that. All right, like I said, we're gonna see new cards, I'm assuming. Here is the new Aggression card. Cost two, as one. It's an attack card, Alliance. It says here, hero action, attack, exhaust an Avenger character and a Guardian character. Deal X damage to an enemy, where X is the combined attack of those characters, and this attack gains overkill. Now, it's the first time I've seen that Alliance word, and I, I did notice it is on the little book here, so I guess I can go look at that real fast. Okay, so that's interesting. Just read that real quick. What it is, is since it says exhaust an Avenger character and a Guardian character, what Alliance means is other people can help you pay that cost. If I'm playing this card as my hero action, whether it be on another player's turn or my turn, anybody can, since it says Alliance here, I'm making my intention saying, hey, I wanna play this card. Anybody can help me pay that cost. So if in my case, I think my, I'm pretty sure I know, actually, I don't know why I'm saying all that. My leadership deck with Ant-Man is Avengers. So if someone else is playing some Guardian characters, they can tap a Guardian character to help me pay for this. And then we do the damage. So there should be three of these since it's a new card. We have the new uh, Justice card. Vigilante Training. Cost one for support. Max two per deck. Put two uh, training counters on it. Exhaust this card and remove one training counter from it. Choose a Justice event in your discard pile and shuffle it into your deck. There's some good Justice events, so I can see this is useful. Not sure if I'll throw it in my Justice deck quite yet. My Justice Hulk deck, maybe. <laughs> All right. We have the new Protection card here. It's a uh, four for an event, Stand Together. It is another one of those Alliance, so that means someone else can help me pay for this in multiplayer. When a friendly character would take any amount of damage from an attack, exhaust an Avenger character and a Guardian character. Prevent all of that damage, deal that much damage to the attacking enemy. And I just realized this might work, these might work really well in some of my decks because one of my friends that plays this deck with me plays Rocket Raccoon, who would be a Guardian. So he could tap his Rocket Raccoon character and then depending on if my character has an Avenger or whatever, might throw these in the deck. So we get three of those. And we have a new basic, which can go in any deck. I did not mention that with some of the basics that were in his, in his uh, deck here. There are basics that can go in any deck, no matter what aspect you build it to. And I noticed here it's a weapon, so this means it could go into the Venom deck, which I have built. It is one for an upgrade, attached to an ally, max one per ally. Attached ally gets plus one attack, and its attacks gain ranged. I uh, don't know if it needs to go in my Venom. My Venom's more uh, built for tapping its weapons, but still, get a new one. Three of those. And then they give you another one of the team-ups. Even though it's max one per deck, that way you can have one in your War Machine and one in your Iron Man deck. But All right. Well, cool. We'll definitely get this to the table and try the solo play against Rhino and see how it plays. And if you've never watched one of those before, what I do basically is I do not change this deck. I'll sleeve it up and just play it as is straight out of the box and see how it pairs up against Rhino and a random scheme. But with that, we'll go to the table and get that done and try to get it edited out and let you see what it, how it plays out. Other than that, thank you for watching and have a great day.